。什么是泄洪啊？泄洪就是用万亩良田，几十万人的倾家荡产，换来了一个城市的平安。以后看见农民，看见咱们河北的农民，请尊。Due to heavy rainfall in Beijing, Hebei, Tianjin, and other regions in China, authorities took measures to ensure the safety of Beijing and the Xiong'an New District, the area with the lowest elevation in Hebei. As a result, the cities in Zhouzhou and Bazhou in Hebei Province were heavily affected by flood discharge, forcing over a million people to flee their homes. On August 5th, the rain stopped in Hebei, and the previously evacuated people returned to their homes, witnessing scenes like this. In the video, many cities and villages can be seen submerged in deep water. In some slightly elevated areas, the flood water has receded, leaving behind a scene of devastation. Look around; every household is clearing up the debris. <laughs> This is a market in Shangfan Town, Baizhou, Hebei. Where many houses are still submerged in water, with the water level almost reaching the rooftops. Some netizens also capture the scene in Fu Guan Yi Village, Shenfang Town, which appears to be like a waterlogged zone. In slightly higher areas, the water level is not as high, so some local farmers enter their homes. In the footage, all the furniture and belongings are still immersed in water, with a depth of about twenty to thirty centimeters. Seeing their homes in this state, we can imagine how saddened the farmers must have felt at that moment. This is Lu Fu Zhuang Village, located at the northernmost bank of Da Qing River in Wen'an County, Hebei Province. Lu Fu Zhuang is home to the largest steel sheet and plate trading market in North China, and is renowned as a prosperous village. However, now a flood has left the villagers with almost nothing. Once a bustling and vibrant village is now submerged in over one meter of water, silent and desolate, resembling a ghost town. On August fifth, a young man returned to his hometown, Shanpo Town, Li Shui County, Baoding City, where the flood also struck. Today is the fifth day after the flood. I'm currently at the Yas Sanpo Freeway exit in the first village, Nanyu Village. Most of the flood water has receded, and we have cell phone reception now. But power supply hasn't been restored yet. About two thirds of the houses in the village were either submerged or washed away by the flood. This is the scene on August third. Before the flood water receded, it looked like a lake with only a few tree tops visible and many houses submerged in water. On the afternoon of August fourth, China Central Television (CCTV) reported news about the flood in Baizhou, attributing to the flooding to heavy rainfall. The report also showed rescue operations in Baizhou, claiming that all stranded individuals had been evacuated. The CCTV report sparked public outrage because local residents knew that the government intentionally discharged flood water, which submerged Baijiu. Moreover, rescue personnel present at the scene accused CCTV of staging rescue scenes. Baijiu residents reported that on July 31st, the Hebei Baijiu Flood Control and Drought Relief Command announced that the upper level authorities decided to activate the Dongdian Flood Detention Area on August 1st at 2 a.m. Forcing 73,205 people in 47 detention areas in Baijiu to evacuate. Subsequently, the flood discharge on the morning of August 2nd caused half of Baijiu to be inundated. On August 3rd, Chinese media also reported that Nei Yufen, the secretary of Hebei Provincial Party Committee, stated that Hebei must activate flood detention area in an orderly way to alleviate the flood control pressure on Beijing and resolutely act as the capital protective barrier. As early as August 1st, the Chinese Ministry of Water Resources had issued instructions to ensure the absolute safety of Xiong'an New District and Beijing Daxing International Airport. 
On August 4th, a netizen on Twitter revealed that the direct cause of the flooding in Zhouzhou was due to the initiative of Chai Wenhua, the secretary of Zhouzhou Party Committee, who requested to divert floodwaters to Zhouzhou from Xiong'an New District. Within two hours, his request was approved by the Politburo Standing Committee member Chai Chi, leading to the decision to flood Zhouzhou. Even the high-level Baoding Municipal Party Committee was unaware of this, let alone any rescue measures. It was alleged that Chai Wenhua is the nephew of Chai Chi and had a rapid promotion, becoming the deputy mayor in 2020, the mayor in 2021, and then the secretary of the Municipal Committee, achieving three promotions in just two years. This flooding incident conveniently covered up the economic mess in Zhouzhou. After Zhouzhou was intentionally flooded by breaching the embarkment, the downstream city of Gaobeidian also suffered from embarkment breaches for flood discharge. Netizens exposed that a 600-meter-long flood discharge outlet was dug on the south side of Dongwu village by Go River, Gaobeidian, causing the evacuation of 110,000 people. The government not only explicitly stated the activation of flood detention areas, but also secretly sent people to dig breaches in river embankments for flood discharge. Twitter blogger Mr. Lee is not your teacher posted a video confirming that on the morning of August 1st, the government sent people to dig a breach on the west side of the bridge on Baigo River in Si Village, Galbandian City, with the intention of flooding the east side of Jojo thereby relieving the pressure of floodwaters towards the downstream direction of Baiyandian and Xiong'an New District. As they attempted to secretly breach the embankment, vigilant villagers guarding the embankment in Si Village discovered and blocked them. The embankment protectors argued their village was not a flood detention area and should not be flooded. There were still elderly and children who had not evacuated from the village, and if they hadn't stood their ground, the entire village might have been lost. The personnel preparing to breach the embankment also brought a large number of police, and many villagers were taken away by the police. The reason these villagers were guarding the embankment was that in the past, many towns had experienced forced breaches on the embankments for flood discharge, even when there were still many people residing in those areas. The situation continues to unfold. On the early morning of August 5th, in a village in Galbadian, villagers guarding the embankment noticed people attempting to secretly breach it near the village entrance. These individuals did not reveal their identity and left in an embarrassment amidst the questioning from the villagers. Numerous pieces of evidence indicate a strong connection between the severe floods in Jojo and Baijiu, Gobe, and international flood discharge by the CCP officials. The CCP's official's mouthpiece, CCTV, falsely claimed that the floods in Baijiu were caused by heavy rain, infuriating netizens who took to Weibo to denounce the shamelessness of the CCP. This is flood discharge, not heavy rain. Why the false reporting? Give us the people of Baijiu an explanation. It was clearly caused by flood discharge, but they are saying it's due to heavy rain. We gave up our homes to make way for the flood and our families were scattered, seeking refuge in different places. Helplessly, we watched as the flood gradually engulfed our homes and we could do nothing but cry repeatedly. Now we suffer the pain of our homes being destroyed and the media adds insult to injury with their inaccurate reporting, where is justice? On August 5th, hundreds of people gathered in front of the government office in Baijiu, Hebei to protest against the authorities for intentionally discharging flood water and submerging their homes. They demanded compensation for their losses and put up banners that read, Give back our homes. It was clearly flood discharge, not heavy rain. The protesters accused authorities of falsely attributing the floods to heavy rain. In response to the protest, authorities deployed a large number of police and riot police armed with anti-riot gear to violently disperse the demonstrators. Hebei Provincial Party Secretary Nei Yufeng's statement also triggered anger and dissatisfaction among netizens. They criticized him for only caring about flattering his superiors and disregarding the lives of people and exclaimed, The lives of Hebei people also matter. The Chinese Communist Party employed its usual tactics of internet censorship to prevent the spread of information. Despite causing such a massive disaster, the CCP authorities have shown inadequate response to relief efforts and have even become embroiled in confusion and absurdity.
As of now, no senior CCP officials from the central government have visited the disaster area, and even provincial level officials have not appeared on site. Instead, the high ranking officials from Zhongnai Hai, the central government's leadership compound, have gathered at the Bei Dai He Resort for leisure and recuperation. In the hardest hit area of Jojo, the water depth reaches over 10 meters. However, local rescue efforts lack unified coordination and are in a state of almost anarchy. The mayor and party secretary of Jojo have not been seen for several days. Some netizens have issued missing person notices, urgently seeking the mayor and the party secretary of Jojo, stating that they have been out of contact for days and the city is facing an unprecedented disaster, requiring someone to take charge and publicize the truth. The video shared by netizens show that the victims have no food and can only scavenge for food soaked in flood water to satisfy their hunger. On August 4th, a video on Twitter shows a middle-aged man kneeling and pleading for help. He says that in his hometown, Tan Jia Village, Zhao Zhuang Town, Li Shui County of Hebei Province, more than 20 of his family members are missing. And he has no information about the situation of those who are still alive. The man desperately appeals, stating that the area has been without power and cell phone reception for three days and he hopes that relevant authorities can quickly send rescue supplies to his hometown to save people. In fact, many rural areas now have a significant absence of young people due to their migration for work, leaving mostly elderly and children with limited self-rescue capabilities. The government's incompetence has led to heavy reliance on civil rescue organizations to participate in relief efforts. Personnel involved in the rescue operations have exposed the reality of the situation, stating, In severely flooded areas, there are still large numbers of residents who have not been evacuated. In the two towns I have experienced without accurate data, we we estimate that there are still 1,000 to 2,000 people yet to be evacuated, some of them sleeping on rooftops. The government's emergency response is poorly informed, and they have lost their command capabilities. The key information required for the rescue effort is collected by us from the internet. Additionally, some nursing homes have not been evacuated, and flood cannot be delivered. The conditions underwater are too complex, resulting in over 50% of rubber boats being punctured. Civilian rescue efforts are also facing significant challenges as they encounter heavy obstacles and hindrance from the government. Many instances have been exposed online, where civilian rescue teams are blocked on highways with no government officials coordinating with them. They are even required to produce an invitation letter before being allowed to engage in rescue operations. A real-life absurdity was revealed by mainland media on August 1st at noon. A rescue team arrived at Beiyuanji village in Jojo, where 90% of the residents had not been evacuated. However, the rescue team was unable to conduct the rescue without a local invitation letter. Unfortunately, the official seal of the local town government was washed away by the flood and couldn't be found, thus preventing the issuance of the invitation letter. As a result, the rescue team was trapped in a farcical situation where the victims were desperately waiting for rescue while the nearby rescue team was unable to help due to a mere piece of document. Insiders have exposed that some rescue teams were forced to leave by the government because they are not under the government's control. Each member of these civilian rescue teams witnessed the man-made disaster of the flood. Every live stream and interview they conduct continuously reveals the true situation in the disaster-stricken areas. To prevent the dissemination of the distressing scenes in the disaster zones, the government would rather prevent these teams from carrying out their rescue operations. Furthermore, there was an even more absurd incident on August 2nd. The Baigo River in Baoding, Hebei was at risk of busting its banks and an urgent evacuation notice was issued in the early morning. However, the freeway became heavily congested, with some people waiting for up to four hours and still unable to exit Baigo. The reason for the congestion was unexpectedly due to the toll booth that was still collecting fees as usual. As mentioned earlier, the authorities deliberately caused this flood disaster primarily to protect Beijing and then to safeguard Xiong'an. Xiong'an's new district was established on April 1, 2017, and the CCP authorities positioned it as a thousand-year plan and a major national event, designated as the area for concentrated relocation of non-capital functions from Beijing. 
CCP's official media claims that Shang'an New District was planned and built with personal decisions, deployments, and promotion by Xi Jinping himself. Therefore, Shang'an New District is also regarded as a vanity project and a political achievement for Xi Jinping. After more than six years since its establishment, the authorities have already invested over 400 billion yuan, about 56 billion USD, in Shang'an. Unfortunately, due to the reluctance of businesses and universities in Beijing to relocate to Shang'an, the area has faced numerous suspended projects. The lack of population, despite the abundance of houses, had led to it being dubbed as a ghost city. Shang'an New District also faces a significant problem with its relocation, as it is situated in the lowest lying area of North China. To what extent is Shang'an's terrain low lying? In the plain areas of Beijing, the elevation ranges from twenty to sixty meters, while Shang'an, the elevation is only seven to nineteen meters. Tianjin City is downstream of Shang'an, where the average elevation is five meters. Shang'an is about a hundred kilometers away from Tianjin and the White Pond area, with a normal water level of seven meters. Follows the Dachi River downstream for a hundred kilometers. Descending only two meters to reach Tianjin, which is a mere zero point zero two percent gradient. If there is a slightly larger flood upstream, it can easily breach the dikes and cause a flood disaster. So, what is the situation upstream of the White Pond area? The incoming water coverages the flow of nine rivers, with a basin area of over thirty thousand square kilometers. As a result, the Shang'an area has historically been prone to frequent flooding, earning It the nickname Nine Floods in Ten Years. Therefore, those officials of the CCP sacrificed areas like Zhouzhou, Baoding, and Baijiu as flood diversion zones in order to protect Xi Jinping's prestige project Shang'an New District from being flooded. The only way was to implement mid-course diversion. According to experts, there will be a second round of flood discharge in the near future, and it will take about a month for the floodwaters in many detention areas to completely recede. On August. Third, renowned water expert Wang Weiluo, who is based in Germany, stated in a media interview that the floods in Hebei were entirely man-made. He referred to it as making you suffer from floods through artificial control. The Chinese Communist Party's approach to water management is to make water obey its orders. Wherever it wants water to go, water must go there. So it chooses who gets flooded and who doesn't.